Um, but it, I want to address the pain point while we sit here, uh, not only on the user side. We know we heard about all the things lacking in Africa, India, Pakistan, etc. I want to turn it around. I want to make it something possible for those oncologists on the ground seeing patients and how we can improve their lives, not the patient lives direct, indirectly, their lives. Um, so because what are they facing? Uh, as an oncologist, you see a patient with a problem, which is cancer, and what you do is you dig into literature and your own knowledge to know what drugs or treatments are there proven to be efficacious. So you go into the guidelines, you go into PubMed, and you find the drug or you, the combination radiation of surgery, which has been proven, but it has been proven in clinical trials done mainly 90% in the Western world, right? They're not done on your original population, as well as they're performed 90% in early stage cancer. They're not performed in that advanced uh, suffering patient you have in front of you. So more than 70% of clinical trials are aiming stage one, two disease, okay? So it's difficult to find knowledge or guidelines of uh, advanced, uh, local regional advanced breast cancer patient, okay? So you already have little knowledge, a written knowledge and guidelines on your back to make a medical decision. So what are you going to offer? Every oncologist, at that moment you make the trade-off, you're not only looking what will be the response rate, but you also have to trade off the costs. The cost, what that drug will be mean financially, or do you have that radiation uh, department behind you or not? The availability and the cost of that financially and logistic, but as well as the means for the patient, the risk you're going to take, because if, Every treatment has side effects. We cannot forget that. And we make that mental calculation every time we have the family and the patient in front of you. That uh, knowledge of side effects is also based on clinical trials, what we are reading in journals and what we find in PubMed. Toxicity equals between five fractions and 30 fractions. Or this drug is safe, okay? Those regimens are tested in a population who are far more fit and younger than you see in general in front of you. We know that patients treated in clinical trials, just by being treated in a clinical trial, lives 30% better than those outside trials, okay? So you are not sure about your knowledge, what are you going to give in terms of efficiency, and you're not sure what you're going to cost. Okay, and I think that is a pain point I want to tackle in the Western world because that trade-off is everywhere equal. However, toxicity in the Western world to today gets relative, right? We can be so precise as we say, or we can be so monitoring well that we can tackle that quite uh, good. When you are outside the Western world, you lose your patient too easily far away, four kilometers away, and they are having more advanced disease and they are far more fragile, okay? So I'm still in my first slide, okay? <laughs> but this is the backup. What is reality today is that we see less cancer still in the non-Western world, but when you look at the mortality, the ratio, how deadly the disease is, is shocking. Every time I show this is man and we talk about uh, gender uh, relation, women are as bad, right? That mortality is not only cancer mortality, it's also mortality because of treatment, and we should not forget that, okay? So when you're going to prescribe chemotherapy, there is a risk, uh, a reality, that you will kill the immune system of that patient. And that means that HIV or a, a stupid common cold can take over and become mortal in that patient, okay? What we do in clinical practice is we see a patient, we try to make it as compliant as possible, so to really motivate, to say, okay, I'm going to do something with you, but you have to help me. You have to comply, you have to come back. 
And every time you feel not sure, ring me, okay? So you work on your emotional but binding all capacities to create compliance. Okay? You go into educate and you try to find tools to monitor what you're doing. The moment you prescribe, what, what are your trade-offs? You want to know how they have been treated before, how fragile they are, how old they are, what kind of disease they have, so, and what are other diseases are in there as well, okay? So there are, in every country, the same risk factors. We know if you do a, a five of you treatment in uh, uh, the Netherlands Amsterdam or in Cape Town, it's the same. It's the same drug, and you think you make that mental counting the same way. However, the background is not the same. Maybe tumor pathology is not the same. Genetics of the patients you are treating are not the same. We know that there are certain genetic profiles who are far more sensitive to toxicity than others. They cannot eliminate the five of you, 10% of the patients, or they really react badly on radiation. That's all about 1%, okay? For today, we do a five question, a five phrases questionnaire. We look at the blood counts, we go, and we cross our fingers, right? That's reality. Today, with our communications and data collection tool, I think we can do far better. So and there I come to my project where I would like to have your interest because what I want to do is to collect data of your populations and to see what is prescribed, okay, and what happens after. Because if you come in the title, if you want to predict outcome in terms of toxicity risk as well as uh, efficiency chance, you have to have large groups and come to a conclusion. And I'm talking now not about randomized trial settings, I'm talking about real population data, which is our region dependent, okay? This is a whole industry which is already going on because we have far better um, uh, uh, um, data collection materials, cloud, whatever, going there now uh, possible to do this. But what happens is, it, again, it happens in the Western world. So whenever you come with a tool, it will not be applicable for where you are, okay? To, the algorithm is not the biggest problem. How to predict, if you have the data, the algorithm I have already. I have the team to do that, okay? What I need is the data collection and test that. The test, which is tested in the Western world, to test also in India, or in Cape Town or other regions, okay? How does it work in practice for a physician? And now we really need to catch up with uh, 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 chaps, not uh, whatever, <laughs> Facebook. I'm, I'm even the wrong generation here. Uh, but we have to catch up there because those patients and physicians, what they have, they have their mobile phone, okay? They're going to use that. They're going to use that to do the education, the monitoring, and the questionnaires, and to make them also communicate among each other. Because that we spoke about the mental and all the cultural um, difficulties around cancer in your regions, and that comes aside. We have to work on that compliance part because data and just giving will not result. We need to know what happens after. 